myths about the Bible people believe as fact. Noah preached for hundreds of years before the flood. The long version. When God told Noah the flood was coming, he went into detail on why he wanted Noah to build an ark what to make the ark out of, how to even like seal it up. Cause at this point, no one had ever made a boat before. God gave very specific instructions. He even talked about the animals that would go in, preparing the food. And very specifically in verse 18, he mentioned who would be on the ark. Noah, Noah's sons, Noah's wife, Noah's son's wives. God did not tell Noah, go preach and try to recruit more people. God did not tell Noah, I need you to make room for 300 people on this boat, 50 people on this boat. No, eight people were mentioned because Noah was the only righteous man on earth. And so his family was saved. Verse 22 says, Noah obeyed everything God said. Meaning when you give full obedience to God, you're not adding your own thing. So if God told Noah, build the ark, but God did not tell Noah to preach, if Noah were to preach and say, oh, well, God didn't say it, but I'm going to still preach. That's not full obedience. You're doing your own thing. Now, New Testament, Jesus says that as in the days of Noah, people would be going about their lives and would not know that the day of his coming is near. Jesus is quoted specifically saying, in the days of Noah, the world was unaware of the flood until it happened. <laughs> How would they be unaware if Noah had been preaching for hundreds of years? Again, New Testament, Hebrews 11, the chapter of faith, it says, by faith, Noah built the ark. It does not say by faith, Noah preached to the people. Peter mentions twice in his books that eight people were saved because those eight were righteous before God. Noah, Noah's wife, Noah's three sons and their wives, eight people. There have been times in the Bible where Abraham said to God, Okay, but if there's 50 righteous, will you save the nation? If there are 20 righteous, if there are 10, and God went down to the number 10 in the book of Genesis. But when it came down to the flood, there were only eight that were righteous. That's why only eight were saved. Everybody else had a choice on what they were going to do because they could have tapped in like Noah and they could have heard what God was saying and been on board, but that just wasn't the case. It was only Noah his three sons, their wives, and his wife. That was it. And it's not like God rejoices in the death of the wicked. God does not want anyone to die. That's never his goal. It's never the goal for anyone to perish. That He wants everyone to be able to hear him and be able to live the way that he created us to live. But we all have a choice and we all have free will. But when things got so evil where it's like, okay, this is the limit, like no more. That's when he destroyed the earth to start over and saved Noah and the animals and made the earth new and made a new covenant. And that's when he made a new covenant with people who he knew were gonna listen to him and would trust him and would move how he instructs. So how do things like this get spread then? The reason myths like this even get created are because someone receives an extra revelation, whether it's true or not, um, and they believe that God has shown them more. And then people start to repeat this as if it's a fact and as if it's in the Bible. Meanwhile, we're not being honest that the source of this statement is actually a human being who is not written in the Bible and who feels it, that God inspired them with more information. And now I'm not calling anyone true or false. I am not here to tell you these are true prophets, these are false prophets. I am here to say everything we need to know is in the Bible. If this person is truly inspired by God, their words can be backed up by the Bible. Because otherwise, where do we draw the line to say, oh, this person can be inspired by the Holy Spirit and it's not in the Bible. And that is true. But this one can be inspired, but... That's not true. How do you even draw the line if you're just going to go with everything? Everything needs to line up with the Bible. And if it doesn't, don't believe it as a fact. It's okay to believe it as, okay, that's someone's opinion or this is a possibility. But if it's not in the word of God, do not accept it as a fact. Do not start repeating this to other people as if this is a fact.
because it's such a pet peeve of mine. In certain denominations, in certain circles, we say Noah preached for hundreds of years as if this is in the Bible when nowhere in the Bible does it say that. God himself in Genesis does not tell Noah to preach. God himself again as Jesus does not mention that Noah preached. When it says that God was patient with the people in Peter's book, God was patient in that during the time Noah was building, anyone could have repented for what they had done and God would have filled them in and said, you see Noah? Yeah, go align yourself with him. He's doing my work. Go do the work with him. The same way he does today, God will put people in your life who are also listening to him to partner with you to do his will. That was a possibility even then too. Noah didn't have to preach. His life was the testimony. His obedience was the sermon. He didn't have to say it with words. And so even if Noah didn't preach, that doesn't mean that God was not fair. God gave everyone a chance to know him and he still does. And God can speak to you just like he speaks to all these pastors you see with platforms, all these prophets you see with ministries, all the people we read about in the Bible. God can speak to you as simple as it sounds. It's very true. The reason myths like this spread is actually to gatekeep information. Because if the Bible is so simple that anyone can read it and anyone can get the interpretation and anyone can hear from God, then you wouldn't have to go to this seminar to get the true meaning and go through this Bible study with this pastor and specifically read this book by this prophet to get the real interpretation. Meanwhile, the Bible is so simple that anyone can hear the Holy Spirit. Anyone can hear from God. The same God who was working in their lives can work in yours too and can give you the practical application of his word. You don't have to go through these other ways. This myth that Noah preached for hundreds of years before the flood was started by people who were taking a creative license or people who felt like they were inspired and God told them and showed them that Noah was preaching. But it's not in the Bible. It's what other people added on to that. And the problem is not that, you know, it's not possible that Noah preached, but the problem is that if we believe, okay, God showed this person something and it's not in the Bible, but we still believe it, where do we draw the line? Then anyone can make anything up and say, well, God told me, and it's not in the Bible, but God told me, and we would just believe it. We have to use the word of God as our standard. No matter who, what prophet, if they've been right before, if they've never been right, a broken clock is right twice a day, by the way, but Everything has to be by the word of God. It doesn't matter how charismatic the person is. It doesn't matter if you like other things about them. It doesn't matter if God has used them before. You have to test every single word by the word of God. Even these videos that you're watching right now, open up your Bible. I'm not gonna read it for you because I want you to see for yourself what the word of God says. Because the problem is when we start to believe that other people have insight on the Bible that no one else has and no one else can access, then we only can access that information through that person. And that's not how it's meant to be. God made the Bible so everyone can access the same information because it's his spirit who gives it to us. It's not us as humans deciding who gets to know. There's no gatekeeping. In the book of Acts chapter 10, Peter, who was a disciple of Jesus and actually like one of Jesus's like closest friends in the top four of his like besties <laughs> with Peter and uh, James and John, Peter himself was rebuked about gatekeeping. In chapter 10, God was rebuking Peter because Peter didn't believe that people who are not Jews could receive the Holy Spirit. He didn't believe that the gospel was for the world. He thought it was just for the people in his community who look like him and believe like he believes and in his cultural group. Meanwhile, God wanted to share this message with the entire world. So God gave Peter that vision in Acts chapter 10 of the sheet with the animals and saying, don't call common what God has not called common. Don't call unclean what God has called clean. And even Peter was surprised when he did answer that call and he went to Cornelius's house. He was surprised that even Gentiles received the same Holy Spirit just as the Jewish believers did too. And that showed him that God does not show partiality. God is going to reveal the same thing 
to this group that he will to this group. Peter said this again. If then God gave to them the same gift that he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Who was I that I could stand in God's way? And who are we to say that only certain people can receive the truth through studying this specific pastor, reading this specific book? God speaks through his word, the Bible, plain and simple. You need no other evidence. It's all right there. So don't let these people gatekeep and tell you that you have to train at this specific Bible college. No, no, no. All you need is the word of God and a willing, open heart to hear his Holy Spirit, period. Follow for more.